finished the morning run, check, walked the dogs, ran the dogs, whatever you want to call it. Did some weightlifting, and uh, so I'm going to go grab some kale and some greens for my uh, garden fresh smoothie. But first, I'm actually going to go see if the ducks and the chicks uh, that were born a few days ago are still alive. I've got my, my baby lamb buddy that I take for a little walk here. He likes to follow me around the farm, kind of hang out with me. She's pretty cute. Well, is it still alive? A duck egg is definitely good. It's kicking? Yeah. Okay. This cool. one here? Not so good. It's going to be stinky. Rotten. Do you want me to... Away, yeah. You're 100% sure? Yeah. Yeah, I don't... It's not moving at all. It's sloshy in there, it's isn't sloshy. it? That's not good, right? No. Where's the ducky? <laughs> he's hanging out with mom. Watch but he's, he's good? He's walking oh, around? Yeah. Because oh, yeah. last time I see him, oh yeah, he's good. <laughs> the last time I see him, he was all slimy and weak, and now he's he's good. He's cute. He says, I don't know why I don't look anything like mommy or brother, but uh, <laughs> I still got my mom and she loves me, so that's all that matters. Don't look at me with that bombastic side eye. <laughs> Whee! Yeah. All right, you grab a couple of these. A couple of these fresh ones. They're a little bit bigger, but that's okay. They'll do good in a smoothie. Mm -hmm. That should do it. That should be plenty. Go. Got a red one? You got a red one? Find the red. Did you already get that one? Isn't really ready yet, buddy. <laughs> you should have waited. There, there was a bunch of red ones in here. He, yeah, I see some. I see that some that, way. <laughs> that you got a hold of already. He's like a little raccoon. We don't have to watch out for the raccoons in the strawberry bed. We got to watch out for the little dude. <laughs> he ate quite a few, I think. All right, so I've got the old ninja. So I just wash these off a bit. Stick that in there. A little bit of water. If I have like a couple strawberries that are ready or blackberries or something, I'll throw some berries in there too. And we've got these power beets, the nature fuel that I'll put in there. That just kind of touches on all kinds of different nutritional gaps. Um, beets are so good for you. And this is uh, Super Greens by Mountain Ops. This got a ton of different stuff. They got a lot of uh, different probiotics and whatnot in them. I use a lot of Mountain Ops stuff for hunting. It's just kind of become a part of my daily routine. And that's it really. You know, like I said, you can throw some berries in there and kind of make it your own. Got a little bit of fiber in there from the kale and all those nutrients and just keep it simple. Cause I, you know, you do this every single day and you just want something big complex thing every single day. That's what it looks like. Bottoms up. I got another tub over there so you can get some water. I don't know if I mentioned it, but we did not have bees after this last winter again. So this is the second hive we've had run off or not make it. I think we're taking a break from bees for a little while. Just together, that's $500. That's not even counting all the equipment. That's just the hives themselves, 500 bucks. I'm gonna have to just maybe do some more training, maybe catch some hives or something. Buying hives is just too expensive and we're just not having any success at it. So we're gonna pick these up and move these in the barn, keep them dry and This is the beginning of what we're going to be using as a, a market stand, a roadside market stand. Right? Selling mostly eggs, um, but all kinds of produce that we have extra of and stuff that we make. Just to make a little bit more, see, see kind of what, what happens and see if we can make a little bit of income. Uh, we don't have much traffic by here, but you never know. Full disclosure, this started out as a Lego table for my son. And when I tried to get it to the door, I realized that I'd made it too wide. So instead of scrapping it and taking it apart and trying to remeasure everything and then putting it all together, I know that was really dumb of me, but I'm trying to make the best of it here. And so instead I just started to uh, take some stuff off and put some, reinforce some legs and I'm going to make a, this market stand, right? So obviously you can see I cut the hole there for the cooler. Just got an old cooler we're going to stick in there and, and that's where we're going to have our eggs. Cleaning up the farm. So I got a scrap metal that's perpetually been getting bigger and bigger. Um, and so we're taking it in today. When I got home from work, the kids were already out here. 
uh, trying to figure out how to get this in the truck because they, uh, to be honest, I think they must want something because they know I have to drive into town. They're going to make a little bit of money. And uh, so I don't know if they want, want something out of this or not. But anyway, it's a good way to get them out of work, get them motivated to get out of the house, get them to work. So not a huge trailer, but there's a lot of heavy stuff on there. Got the lawnmower and all that stuff. So we're going to take it in. And the least we're going to do is we're going to get the farm a little bit more clean around here. Uh, and just kind of continue to uh, make the farm look a little bit more pretty. Less junk all over the place. I'd love to get rid of more stuff, but I feel like as soon as I get rid of it, I might need it. So this is just stuff that absolutely long since beyond repair, like I can't do anything with it. So we're going to pop over there and get this dropped off. So our baby you um, is about a month old today and so trying to go a couple more weeks here and she's already started to kind of be interested in grass and in hay so that's a really good sign still pretty well is is ready to take the bottle when it's and pretty hungry hopefully she starts we've been putting her out on the grass uh, every day all day next to the rams so she's had a good idea of or kind of getting used to them without being in the same gate as them. Um, so every evening we've been putting her in the barn. She has really seemed to do well out here. Gonna be very ready to get her off of the bottle. It is a monumental task keeping this thing fed all the time. Um, and so it's so much nicer when they can get to eating grass on their own and cheaper. Because this, you know, feed, um, it's not mama's milk. It's it's uh, bought and paid for. We don't have any goats or anything to feed them milk from that. And so we just have to buy the powdered milk. So it gets very expensive very fast. You know, as I've mentioned, the poor girl in other videos was attacked by dogs and they, you know, messed up her ears really bad and her ear actually fell off a while back it was like a potato chip <laughs> like the consistency of a potato chip so that's just all the cartilage in it was dead and it just kind of rotted off um but it doesn't seem to really bother her i think she's gonna keep the other one but it's wild you know they're very resilient animals but but man poor girl she's been pretty great it's time to stay in here tonight it's morning to feed lottie the lamb just kind of check over everything check over the garden things are looking pretty good I was hoping for the uh, a little bit of rain um, so we didn't have to water the garden because it is getting kind of dry and I got some stuff that I really want to see pop up through the ground, i.e. sweet corn, a lot of different zucchinis and such that we want to germinate it and popped up out of the ground and see kind of how well our garden's going to be filled out. And I see Lottie's escaped from her pen, so I guess we're going to have to we're going to have to tighten up security, huh? She's hungry. Good girl. This way, this way. Good job. You're getting stronger every day. You had a lot of recovery to go through. A lot of lambs wouldn't make it, but she's kind of a warrior. She's a warrior lamb. There you go, baby doll. I'm gonna let these guys out just for a few minutes while I'm out here, but until we figure out our predator problem, we've got to keep them pretty protected because we've lost um, we lost another turkey, so we're down to only two turkeys. Um, we've lost a barred rock. That was our last barred rock, so we have no more barred rock. Um, pins and we lost two ducks two ducks just completely disappeared no feathers nothing there was nothing left they're just gone one day um kind of kind of crazy but we gotta really um protect these um but luckily we've got new ducks coming new chicks coming so let's go check on those okay so we got our black chick there which is um most likely an australorp it's probably full australorp because the australorp we only have an Australert rooster and a, oh shoot, I forgot, uh, but it basically a red uh, rooster. They're a common breed, but I can't think of the name right now. The Australert rooster is, is kind of the head honcho, and so most likely, unless the other one snuck in a breeding or something, it's probably full-blooded Australert, but we're not too big about having full-blooded, not necessarily wanting to try to make Frankenstein chickens, but um, generally they're, they've been pretty healthy and stuff and what we try we're trying to get i really like the australorps they're probably been my favorite bird they're super hardy they do well in the winter they're they're bigger um, and they just seem to last longer i've had a flock of a lot of different breeds and the australorps just kind of prevail they're just they're just some hardy breeds um so we got the duck in there duck's doing good my wife said there was one in here that was starting to hatch and i don't see any progress 
and they almost seem kind of cold. I'm just sort of wondering if she's lost interest in hatching these, you know? Oh, we do have a duck in there. I can't tell if it's moving around though, but it's definitely trying to get out. So I guess we'll just kind of wait. I don't see it moving much, so that's not a good sign. But I'm going to let nature take its course and just kind of let it break out of there. Okay, so it is moving. I did, I've seen it move. We'll just let it kind of do its own thing. You can see the mouth there. It is a duck egg. I could tell by the, the shell. There's certain proof there with the duck bill coming through and I did see it. It did actually chirp right before I turned the camera off. I was hoping to catch that. That's why I turned the camera on. But now it's kind of quieted up. But it is moving around. It did uh, cheep or chirp or whatever you want to call it. It's just kind of slowly working its way out of there. This is really cool to watch. You have got to be kidding me. Ugh. And another bird. I have no idea what happened to him. Now we have one turkey left. I don't even want to know how much money ought to drain. This sucks. And I have no idea why. Now there's only one left. Uh, so, obviously got a lot to learn with turkey. I know <clears throat> pretty well nothing about them, except for what I've researched, but if you've done this very much, you know that research, Google, and even help from others only goes so far. You can only uh, get enough stuff from YouTube to get you started. Really, the learning process uh, is it's long, and it's sometimes you just have to, to dig in and do it. Sometimes it works out. A lot of times it works out. But like this with turkeys, man, I just, I don't know have not had very good luck and a lot of it's been with dogs you know most of them were killed with my own dogs i gotta really start rethinking uh homestead dogs i love labs but man they once they get a taste for chicken or turkey or poultry or whatever they get away with it i, I don't know how to stop them from doing that I've, I've tried every single method that anybody suggested and it just they don't work and so i can't get them to stop killing things flip it there you go good job good job he just kind of stopped, huh? He's moving. We're gonna assist him along so he can get out and start drying off and move around. It's been since yesterday. Yeah, that's way too long. Let me just do a little assistance here. Prolapse. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not sure this was. I don't know. Yeah, it's got a got a butter crunch here. Something's something's eating it, but for the most part, it's going pretty good. We're gonna start picking on the outsides and and taking it out and using it. We're waiting for our tomatoes to come in so we can have some BLTs. Let's go up here and see how these beets are doing. This is kind of the biggest one here, so I'm just gonna pull it up and see. It's kind of small, so we'll wait. Pretty close, I'd say within the week. We'll be able to harvest these beets and possibly the radishes over there, and then we can throw something else in there. Yeah, they're really oh. juicy. That oh one, man! That one, this one, that one down there. There's a lot. A huh? lot of strawberries that are either ready to go or almost ready to go. Yeah, there's one in the back. There's a lot in the back. Ooh, look at that one. Let me walk this Mmm. Let's see if it's sweet. Is it sweet? Oh yeah, that's good. I mm. get to eat. Yeah. Sorry. Huh. There's a little bitty one right there. Skinny. That one's about ready, isn't it? There's a lot, baby. Gotta leave some for a little guy. Bubba. He's gonna want these. This one tastes like a hot dog. A hot dog? I might <laughs> taste it. it. Tastes like, kinda like a... Oh, look at this one. Kind of like a hot dog. <laughs> what does it taste yeah, like? Yeah, why does it taste yeah, like a hot dog? <laughs> no! 